Hello and welcome to the crypto channel where I try to bring you the news without the hype. The first thing we're going to look at is from President Obama, formerly Deputy Chief of Staff and Campaign Manager Jim Messina, uh, Messina says, I'm incredibly bullish on Bitcoin. Let us listen. Uh, we've got, you know, the crypto, some people are loving it, some people are hating it. They say it's time has passed and all. Where are you on this? Obviously a big you know, proponent here, Brett, where do you see it going? Look, I think blockchain and crypto is one of the most exciting developments in our lifetime. I think when this is all over, we're going to be known this generation for COVID and for reimagining our financial system. I'm incredible. I think it's so true what he says there, reimagining the financial system. Um, there was just so much happening with kind of blockchain technology and the space of crypto. And it's kind of, it's just a really, really exciting space to be in. So he's obviously talking about Bitcoin, but I think it's very, very applicable to kind of the whole crypto space. Incredibly bullish on this. I think it's good to have a crypto winner, getting rid of some of the, the BS projects that what are about out there. Bitcoin itself. Look, I'm I'm bullish. I'm buying Bitcoin right now. I think you know anything. So in and around twenty thousand dollars, can ever get I, back to sixty some odd? Oh, I'll, I'll bet you my Porsche it gets back to sixty. Really? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Life truly is good. Okay, so that was when Bitcoin was around the 20,000 mark. It's obviously uh, into the 40s as we speak. Okay, what I wanted to talk about today was uh, President Obama says Bitcoin is everyone walking around with a Swiss bank account in their pocket. There was, he seemed to like using this kind of analogy of uh, cryptocurrencies being like having a Swiss bank account in your pocket. Back in the day, so going back quite a few years, he was saying, he was just talking about the innovation of crypto, but now he's kind of talking about it from the uh, government side of view. The question we now have to ask is if technologically it is possible to make an impenetrable device or system where the encryption is so strong that there's no key, there's no door at all, what mechanisms do we have available to even do simple things like tax enforcement? Because if in fact you can't crack that at all, government can't get in, then everybody's walking around with a Swiss bank account in their pocket. They certainly are walking around with a Swiss bank account in their pocket. And that's why we all like crypto. It's kind of it's a fascinating space to be in at the moment with uh, cryptocurrencies, blockchain, kind of this whole innovation of technology that now there is something that governments can't get in. It's impenetrable for governments to kind of get in, mess around, mess around with it, control what you're doing and this was the whole reason why Bitcoin was created. And I keep using Bitcoin. I think uh, things like XRP, Ethereum, they have looked at what Bitcoin did and went, OK, where has Bitcoin gone wrong and how can we kind of improve this? But what Bitcoin did is it gave people the idea. It gave people the idea that you can have this thing where governments don't kind of get a say in it. They don't get to control it. You and I have just as much of a say as the government has when it comes to Bitcoin. So it's kind of, you know, sure, they can kind of play with the markets a little bit, but yeah, it's impenetrable. And we are at this kind of unique uh, stage or space in time where so many people in the space have been going, well, I've been holding crypto for six, seven years. I've been holding XRP for seven years and I'm sick of kind of not seeing price action. You know, Bitcoin is a fantastic store of value, but what it's not going to do is cross-border payments because it's just, it's too slow. It's too expensive to transact. There's so many videos of David Schwartz talking about, there's so much kind of pushback in the system from trying to adopt this new blockchain technology because banks, the big banks, they don't want to change. But also when you're trying to change the financial system, there's just so many rules and regulations that this space was never going to, sort of never going to happen fast. And David Schwartz is on Thinking Crypto and Thinking Crypto is kind of talking about, you know, do you think this space has moved fast or do you think it has moved slow? And David Schwartz says, you know, year on, year out, you kind of go, not a lot has happened. But then if you zoom out and you look at what has happened over about a 10 year period of time, you then realize a lot of changes have been made and a lot of progress has been made in this space. So that's kind of, it's kind of exciting. Uh, there was a video that I wanted to show if I can find it. Okay. 
This is a video of Luke Belmar explaining the value of Bitcoin and the scam that is fiat currency. I mean by creating money, I don't mean going to the Federal Reserve and minting money. Creating money, right, is the ability to turn something like your energy of labor, working and transmuting that energy into dollars. So you're creating dollars. Now the question is, do you always want to be expending your physical energy for the creation of dollars? No. Why? Because you're exchanging something that is finite for something that is infinite. Very stupid trade-off. Very stupid trade-off. So the question is, how quickly can you get out of that trade-off? And the bots get angry when I talk about the fact that you do not want to get paid shit money for your time. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, my time... Idiot! You only have X amount of time. Okay, so there's but Luke Belmont. He's okay. quite a fascinating uh, guy. He came from Venezuela with about $200 in his pockets. He's still very young, and he was actually on the Mark Moss show, and they were talking about uh, kind of Bitcoin, etc. I thought he was a little bit, yeah, possibly disrespective to Mark Moss because he went, you know, I, I saw Mark Moss that you had asked me to come onto your show, and I listened to your videos and saw that you were, you know, reasonably intelligent. You know, you don't say to someone you're reasonably intelligent. You're kind of like either if you don't think they're intelligent, you don't say it or you go, I think you're intelligent. But yeah, he kind of there was a few things he said, like uh, the fact he had earned 16 million in one year, but it wasn't a lot of money. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, I understand you're pushing out kind of success on social media and you're getting a lot of people to watch your videos. But the backbone of all of our countries, like the doctors, the nurses, maybe not the doctors, the nurses, the teachers, the fire service, the police, you name it, they're getting paid. You know, in London, a nurse is probably on about 30 to 40,000 pounds a year. So $16 million is a lot of money. But I digress. The reason why I kind of bought Luke Belmar up is because he was, when he was on the Mark Moss show, and I'm probably not going to be able to find this video, I'm not going to be able to find the video. Uh, he was talking about the principles of conservation of energy and there was a fantastic video of a scientist back in the day, I think it was about the 1990s, where he was talking about conservation of energy, how energy doesn't go, doesn't just disappear, it kind of moves from something else. And Luke Belmar and Mark Moss were discussing how when you are at work, you are putting energy into your work and then you want to get money back out of it. But the problem is you're now needing to put more and more effort into your work, more energy into your work in order to get less money out because of inflation, the money printing machine, etc. And people are kind of going, this doesn't seem right. You know, all of my energy, I'm putting more and more all the time. I'm working harder and harder, but yet somehow I seem to have less and less money. And then you have cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin led the way where it woke people up to go, wow, there's a, this amazing new technology where somebody else doesn't control what happened? Someone doesn't control the financial policy of the blockchain and it's impenetrable by governments like Barack Obama said. So, yeah, I just think it's a it's a fascinating space. Me personally, uh, I see a lot of influencers kind of going, if you want to see my portfolio, then go to my Patreon account or go to this paywall where you need to pay me more money and I will show you what I'm trading. Me personally, I think it's common sense to kind of have a portfolio that holds Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. Bitcoin, I think, will remain as a store of value for quite a long time. I think Ethereum is going to do very well. There's so much development on Ethereum. And I think XRP is going to get to where they want to go with cross-border payments. The thing I like about XRP and Ripple, the company, is you actually have a group of people that can walk into the, ha to the halls of power and actually talk to the CEO of a bank or they can talk to the head of governments. And yeah, it's kind of, again, it was fascinating listening to the David Schwartz interview on Thinking Crypto because, you know, listening to how Ripple, the company, is going into these kind of big meetings and big partnerships, and they've just had the huge um, partnerships with Metico, quarter of a billion. And it was just fascinating hearing his, in, hearing his insights into, you know, when they were forming, it wasn't a partnership, it was an acquisition. So when Ripple acquired Metico for quarter of a billion, he said everyone was on kind of, eggshells not wanting to say the wrong thing because they didn't want to ruin a quarter of a billion um, acquisition. But now that they're both on the same side, they're having kind of really fruitful uh, conversations. I forget where I was going to go with that. Uh, so yeah, he was actually talking about CBDCs on Ripple and how his 
or their guys had gone out to all these countries and spoke to governments and gone, gone, is any of you interested in CBDCs? And he said, six came back saying, yeah, okay, let's start piloting this technology, countries like Palau. And David Schwartz said he was actually really surprised. He didn't expect six. He thought maybe one would happen. But also with the technology, with what Ripple is doing, he was talking about how in America it's really, really difficult. And that's obviously the nut that they're trying to crack. And I think they're doing very well in order to be able to do payments in America and around the world from America using America's financial system. But he was talking about other countries where, for example, you have a king. You don't need to go through all the regulations sort of hurdles. If that king says, yeah, this is fantastic, you can do this, then all of a sudden the pathway is opened and Ripple is able to kind of get in and do what they want to do with their technology. So I'm very bullish on the future of crypto. I think when you listen to anybody, more and more people are talking about the space of crypto all the time. You have people like Luke Belmar, Robert Kiyosaki, every single person I listen to who comes from a financial background and are very wealthy people all seem to have exposure to cryptocurrencies. A lot of them are talking about Bitcoin, um, but I suspect a lot of them have exposure to other things. Back in the day, XRP became the number two traded cryptocurrency, so it flipped Ethereum. I don't see why that day couldn't happen again. Whether it happens or it doesn't happen, I think, you know, it's frustrating that we haven't seen the price action. But when you kind of see where this space has come, like David Schwartz was saying, over a 10 year period of time, you start to realise just how big this space will be. It's not going anywhere and banks are finally having to say, you know what, OK, we're having to kind of accept this technology. David Schwartz was talking about when they were talking about uh, their payment solutions to companies, the companies, what Ripple was trying to do is not not say that they are a crypto company, because as soon as you said crypto, companies would go, oh, well, that's for bad people and that's for scammers. But interesting enough, David Schwartz says when the Coinbase IPO happened, all of a sudden it gave legitimacy to the space and banks started to go, hang on a minute, how come Coinbase has earned so much money and they're so successful and this is crazy. We've obviously missed something and we need to start focusing on this kind of this technology seriously. The same goes with uh, the spot Bitcoin ETF. It has woken all financial institutions up going, this space isn't going anywhere. It's just going to keep growing. And, you know, I think we're in the best possible space we can be. My advice, and it's not financial advice, it's never financial advice on this channel, would be to have exposure to Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. I think it is a kind of a common sense, common sense approach. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap this video up. What I'm trying to do today is something slightly different from my other video formats where you can actually see me. I'm trying to set up this kind of small room bit by bit. We've been painting in here and my kids have been helping me. Uh, this is actually like a, a shed in my back garden. So if the sound's bad, I apologize and I'll kind of listen to what the audio is doing. Please give me feedback to how this is going. But I actually have a cat flap in the wall because my cat likes to come in here and sleep. Because I've got young kids, they're very noisy. We've got an old cat. So the cat comes into this room and sleeps and I've got a little bed down here for the cat. So uh, that's what we were doing today. We were putting a little cat flap in there because normally the doors just open for the cat to come in. But if I've got equipment in here, I need to keep it dry, etc. But uh, yeah, it's a little room. We're going to hopefully get some little lights around here and just kind of, yeah, do a little bit more of a show. Um, I love cryptocurrencies. I love the space of cryptocurrencies. I love researching about this space. And there's just so many amazing, interesting things happening all the time. Whenever as a kind of someone doing videos, I always think, you know, is there going to be any news that's worthy of talking about the next week? And every single day there are things to talk about in this space. There is actually a video that I will leave you with on a final note down here where it's a girl having a mental breakdown, how she went to university. She actually has two degrees, I believe. And she said, this is absolutely crazy. I'm going for a minimum wage job. No one wants to hire me because there's not enough jobs. I speak three languages and I just, you know, the promise was I go to university, I work hard, etc. And there's so much changing in the world at the moment where people are looking at the education system going, you know, the world's changing so fast. Technology is moving so fast. Everything is up in the air at the moment. And crypto blockchain is going to be right there in the middle of innovation of this kind of brand new world that's being created. You know, Bitcoin store of value, it's kind of already done its thing. And people have woken up to the fact that Bitcoin is a store of value. 
XRP, I think it's gonna, I think we're gonna do very well in the upcoming bull run, but I think with XRP, I think the journey is gonna be long, but when they crack that nut, I think it's gonna be absolutely incredible for the XRP community and kind of all of those people that have had strong hands and held. On that note, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Please let me know how the sound is to this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button. It really does help push this video out to other people. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to the channel. And remember, this is not, uh, this is not financial advice. This is just for entertainment. Thank you for listening.